Good morning. Good morning. What a joy it is to welcome you to worship this morning here at Blacksburg United Methodist Church. We welcome those of you who are here at our Church Street Sanctuary, as well as those who are joining us on the radio and through our live stream. We're so glad to have you among us as worshipers today. If you are joining us by radio or the live stream, we invite you to join us some Sunday here at our Church Street campus. We would love to have you uh, be present with us here in worship. I'm Pastor Ralph Rowley. And I'm Pastor Jennifer Fletcher. And today is Bring in the Harvest, a day where we make special donations to the Interfaith Food Pantry. And so um, if you've not done so already, you're invited to bring forward your grocery bags during the last hymn and place them around the altar. Today we'll have copies of Less Fret, More Faith, a companion volume to our sermon series, our Keeping Calm sermon series, um, for sale in the Wisner Building for $2 each. This is an honor system, and I hope you'll um, stop by after worship and pick up your copy today. This Thursday, November 21st at 5.30 p.m., there will be an interest meeting for the upcoming Kiev uh, mission in the Wisner Building. Um, our, ch our church has a sister church in Kiev, Ukraine, and we have a long-running partnership with them. And so you're invited to come to this meeting to learn more and even to consider being part of a mission team that's going to Kiev in July of 2020. Uh, pizza will be provided, so dinner is taken care of that evening. We want to uh, take a moment to remind you that uh, next Sunday we will have our annual Family Advent Festival, and that's at 4.30. There's more information about that in your bulletin. We hope you'll take note of that. You may have noticed on your way into the sanctuary this morning that our annual giving tree, our angel tree rather, uh, is already up, and there are gift tags on there um, representing some of the needs and wants of children in our local community, and you can help make Christmas brighter for them uh, by choosing one or more of those tags, purchasing the item, and then bringing that back to the church uh, over the next couple of weeks. So we encourage you to get involved in that. I also want to um, encourage you to plan to be present two weeks from today as we begin our Advent Christmas sermon series, which is based on Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. So we're going to have some fun with Dickens' Christmas Carol as we uh, think through uh, the meaning of, of Christmas. We hope you'll be here uh, and present for that. We want to ask Robin Fitzgerald to come forward and uh, to once again share with us about an important ministry opportunity that we want to extend an invitation to each of you to become involved in uh, in our church and community. Good morning. Last week I shared with you an Advent opportunity. Um, we are inviting you to be a part of the team that the the... Fun 143 Sunday Buddies team that is helping get the kids of Fun 143 who are actually asking to come to church on Sunday mornings, um, help get them to church for the four Sundays of Advent. We need about six people on that team. And between services, we got another person. So we still need four people. Um, on the team. So I'm here to ask you again to consider um, being a part of that team for the four weeks of Advent. Um, but I also wanted to give you a little background um, for those of you who may not know or a refresher on Fun 143. The 143 stands for the number of the trailer that the church rents at Blacksburg Estates. And I think we have a picture of it. Um, so that you might be able to see it. Um, it'll be coming up soon. Um, but the church rents a trailer at Blacksburg Estates, and that's where we provide tutoring for elementary and middle and high school students. We also have a mentoring program for middle and high school students, and we also have a post-secondary college fund. Um, so this is a, a very big program that's been in existence over 15 years. Um, so, and it's, it has affected and changed the lives of not only the students, but all of the adult volunteers who've been a part of it. So thank you for the ministry that you already have done. Um, so just wanted to share that with you and give you a couple of ways to respond. You can write on the back of your Connect card today, Fund 143. You can go to the church website at 
um, blacksburgumc.org slash fun 143. You can email me. You can, if you have questions maybe about how you might become involved, you can talk to me about it. Um, we are trying to expand the ways that you can be involved and make it easy for you. So if you can drive your personal vehicle, if that would be easier, talk to me and we'll find a way to make that happen. Thank you. It's not often that we have the opportunity to be involved in a ministry that literally can change the trajectory of these children's lives, and that's what this ministry is doing. It's been an important part of the life of this church for a number of years, and we want to make sure that it continues with strength uh, to uh, touch the lives of these, these children. So um, you may have some questions in your mind, and you're, you're thinking, well, I'm not sure if I want to do this or if I have the time to do this, but uh, if you have some interest at all, don't let that... Um, those questions keep you from writing Fund 143 on the back of your card. It's not a commitment in stone, but it's saying I'm interested in learning more about how I might personally become involved in this ministry of our church. So please uh, take that to heart, pray about it, and see what God might be calling you to do to make a difference in the lives of these children in our community. We hope you'll do that. Um, we want to give you now an opportunity to greet one another, but we know that this is the season of the year when some of us become more concerned about colds and flu and things like that. So if you have any hesitancy about shaking somebody else's hand, either because you think you might be coming down with something or you think they might have something, uh, <laughs> just uh, we want to give you permission to simply place your hand over your heart and, and give a, a warm Christian nod of the head and welcome folks to church if, uh, if you would feel more comfortable to do that. So let's take a moment to greet one another. Let us stand as we are able and join together in our call to worship. Here we are, Lord, your church, uncertain on an ever-changing journey. Show us your path. Here we are, longing to know your way. Guide us to follow you. Here we are, desiring only your comfort to hear your voice. Here we are, God. Lead us according to your will. Please remain standing as we sing hymn number 2146, His Eye is on the Sparrow.
Let's continue singing hymn number 2195, In the Lord I'll Be Ever Thankful. <clears throat> seated. Please join with me in the opening prayer and your responses will be in bold. It's found in your bulletin and on the screen. Let us pray. In the darkness of uncertainty, when we don't know what to do, when decisions are hard to make, light up our darkness. Christ be our light. In the darkness of our anxiety, when we are worried about the future, when we don't know where to turn, light up our darkness. Christ, Christ be our light. In the darkness of our despair, when life seems empty, when we feel there is no future worth seeking, light up our darkness. Christ, Christ be our light. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Where there is oppression, injustice, and poverty, Light up our darkness. Christ, Christ be our light. light. Amen. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. At this time, the children may come forward for children's time as we sing the first verse of Jesus Loves Me. look forward to being with you uh, when we worship together on Sunday morning. So um, for the last few weeks, we've been talking about how God can help us when we are worried or scared or anxious. Um, today, I want to talk with you about peace, and I want to teach you um, a sign for peace. So I want to invite you to do what I do, okay? Start out with your right hand over your left, like this. Now switch it, left hand over right. And now um, just follow me. I want you to move your hands like you're smoothing a sheet or a blanket, like that, just like that. Can we do that all together? Right hand over left, left hand over right, and then smooth the sheet. Perfect. So this sign reminds me of what the Bible tells us about peace. And I'm gonna read a couple verses to you. And when you hear the word peace, can you do the sign? Okay, thank you. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace, very good of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So um, when I start this sign for peace that I just taught you, it feels like I'm worried, like I'm wringing my hands. Do you ever do that when you're worried, kind of fidget? Yeah. Or when you're cold? Yeah. That's... <laughs> um, but God says, do not be anxious about anything. Don't worry about what's going on in your family or in your school or in the world. Instead, God asks us to pray. So remember, you were wringing your hands. Now pray and let him know what is bothering you. And then God can give us peace. And I like this last part of the motion because it reminds me of God taking away all of my worries, like smoothing them away. And so the next time you're worried or afraid, what do you think you can do? <coughs> pray. Good answer. Instead of wringing your hands in worry, pray and let God give you peace. Now, would you pray with me today? Let's clap our hands together, close our eyes, bow our heads, and you can repeat after me. 
Dear God, when we are worried or afraid, thank you for offering us peace and smoothing our scary things away. Amen. Thank you so much. You can go back to your seat now. There's no children's church today. Over the next few weeks, our finance committee and church council will be making some important decisions concerning our ministry budget for the coming year. They will be making some of those decisions based on the estimate of giving cards that have been returned to the church. And uh, we know that uh, somewhere over 150 of you have returned those cards, and we want to thank you for uh, doing that. Uh, there may be others of you who have uh, not had that opportunity or your card got lost. We, over the weekend, sent out a, a fresh card to some of those that might not have uh, returned a card. And uh, let me just emphasize how important it is that, that you um, respond with that card. It could influence significantly the decisions that are made over these next few weeks about our budget next year. That information is critical to our finance committee to be responsible stewards of our church's finances. So let me ask that you would do that as soon as, as you were able, if you've not already done so. And at this time, we would invite our ushers to come forward to receive our morning offer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, the giver of every good and perfect gift, we are the recipients of your blessings and we are grateful. And so in gratitude for the gifts that you have given to us, we now make our gifts to you as a part of this time of worship, that you may be honored through our gifts and that our gifts may make a difference in helping this church share the love of Christ in this community and beyond it in the world. Bless those who give and the gifts that are given to your glory in Christ's name.
be seated. <coughs> I want to thank our choir for uh, their anthem this morning, Oh God Beyond All Praising. It's a, a great anthem, uh, but it's also a hymn that appears in the Faith We Sing hymnal supplements in front of you uh, as number 2009. So some Sunday we may try to sing that together as a congregational hymn. Uh, the tune might have sounded a little bit familiar to you, uh, especially of those of you who pay particular attention to the royal events in England because Thaxted is the, uh, the tune um, for I Vow to Thee My Country, which is often played at royal weddings and things like that in England. Uh, the author of that was an English composer by the name of Gustav Holst. And um, it's, a, it's a very fitting uh, anthem and because of that connection, and I hope in a few moments you'll figure out why I said that. And so I'll just put that out there as a little bit of a teaser. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in worship. We come as those who are hungry, hungry for relationship with one another, but especially hungry for relationship with you. We come also with another hunger, and that is a hunger to hear and to receive your word, that we might from it receive encouragement, guidance, and direction in our lives as we seek to live out our calling as faithful followers of Jesus Christ. And so we pray that you would be present among us today to speak to our heart and feed those deep hungers of our souls. We pray for one another, those on our right and those on our left, those in front of us and behind us, for the entire community of this worshiping family. For we know that represented in this congregation are those who are struggling with issues of health, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, and those who are struggling with other difficult questions and challenges in their lives. And so we pray for one another that your strength and guidance would be sufficient in this moment. We pray also for those who are not among us today, those who uh, are absent from us for reasons of health, or maybe they are shut in, or maybe for whatever reason, just unable to be with us today, we pray for them as well and for their needs. We pray for the people of this community, for we exist not just for ourselves, but we exist for this community that we might touch the lives of people around us and that through us, others may come to know of your love for them in Jesus Christ. And so we pray for the people of our community. Be with us now in this time of worship. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that our ears may be open and our hearts might be ready to receive your word as it is read and proclaimed today. For it is in Christ's name we are gathered and in his name we pray. Amen. Well, a little earlier in our service, as you heard the scripture being read, you thought, might have thought to yourself, that sounds kind of familiar. It sounds a lot like the scripture that we heard read last Sunday. And now that I think about it, it might sound a lot like the scripture that was read a couple Sundays before that. And if you had that thought, you're exactly right, because we're reading the same scripture each Sunday during our series as we are focusing on this one section of uh, Philippians. And uh, each Sunday, we're focusing in particularly on one verse from the passage. And so today, we are focusing on the sixth verse of chapter, uh, the fourth chapter of the letter to the Philippians. And that sixth verse says, Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. That's what our focus is on today. As today we continue our series of messages based on Max Licato's book, Anxious for Nothing, Finding Calm in a Chaotic World. Finding Calm in a Chaotic World. I suspect by now that you've noticed uh, the uh, graphic that we put together for our series that's been appearing on the front of your bulletin each week during our series. Uh, it is uh, emblazoned with the words, keep calm and 1 Peter 5, 7. That is our memory verse for our series. And at the end of my message, we're going to recite that again together as we are doing each week during our series. But if you notice that everywhere we look these days, we see t-shirts and coffee mugs and posters 
and internet memes with variations on the keep calm theme. Keep calm and go fishing. Keep calm and take a selfie. Keep calm and call Batman. Keep calm and have a cupcake. Keep calm and pretend this is on the lesson plan. I think that one was put together by a teacher. There's even a whole series of keep calm memes for Harry Potter fans. Keep calm and carry a wand. Keep calm and go to Hogwarts. Keep calm and trust Snape. Keep calm and stupefy. Everywhere we go, we are being encouraged through these posters and t-shirts and mugs and internet memes to keep calm. Did you know that the keep calm theme originated in England? And there's the connection with the anthem I was talking about a moment ago. Keep calm and carry on was the theme of a motivational poster produced by the British government in 1939 in preparation for England's entry into World War II. And each poster showed the slogan under a presentation of the Tudor crown, a familiar symbol of the British government. And these keep calm and carry on posters were intended to raise the morale of the British public in anticipation of massive air attacks on major cities within hours of the outbreak of war with Germany. Those were indeed, for every British citizen, anxious times. And although two and a half million of copies of that poster were printed, the Keep Calm and Carry On posters were rarely displayed and were little known until a copy, copy was rediscovered in the year 2000 at a bookstore in Alnwick. And since then, of course, countless imitations and even parodies of the poster have been produced. Our acronym for our series of messages is the word CALM. And each letter stands for something significant. The C stands for CELEBRATE. Celebrate God's goodness. The A in the acronym stands for ASK. Ask God for help. And the L in our acronym stands for LEAVE. Leave your concerns with God with thanksgiving. And that's why the sermon title for today is Keep Calm and Leave. But Jennifer noticed right after our email to the congregation went out that that might be misinterpreted. <laughs> and so we, we knew that you needed the full context of what that meant. And so I'd like for us to just say those first words, keep calm and leave. Let's say that together. Keep calm and leave. Now let's put it in context. Keep calm and leave your concerns with God. Let's say that together. Keep calm and leave your concerns with God and with thanksgiving. In what's commonly referred to as Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, do not worry about your life, what you will eat and what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. You see, it's interesting that even in those relatively simple times, people experienced worry and anxiety. And that got me to thinking about what are the kinds of things that we worry and are anxious about in our more modern society, a more complex society. Well, it seems to me that we are often anxious about our finances. How can we make this month's bills? How will I be able to fix my aging car if it breaks down? What if I lose my job? How do we put the kids through college how can we meet our medical bills? How will we ever save enough for retirement? What if the economy falls? And so there are a whole range of questions around our finances that often produce anxiety in our lives. But another thing that we often feel anxious about is our health, especially as we grow older. 
What if I get cancer or Alzheimer's? What if I'm disabled and have to go into an assisted living facility or nursing home? And if we are younger, then we may have these same anxieties concerning our aging parents. We are also anxious about our children and our grandchildren. Will they turn out okay? Will they avoid drugs and sexual immorality? Will they be able to get into college? And when they get out of college, will they find a, a good job that will provide a, a good career path that will sustain them throughout their lives? Will they marry a godly person and have a happy home? And what kind of world will their children have? have to live in. The mass shooting at the school in California this week has reminded us yet again of the risk our children face in simply going to school. When we look at the world around us, we are increasingly anxious for our safety and the safety of our children and other loved ones as we simply go about the ordinary activities of life. There is anxiety all around us. There's anxiety even in the church. Many of us are made anxious by the religious turmoil in our denomination as we continue to be divided in our theological understanding surrounding same-sex marriage and the ordination of practicing homosexuals. And some of you may feel, be feeling anxious about the pastoral transitions that will be taking place next summer at Blacksburg United Methodist Church as I retire and you receive a new pastor. I heard a story about a woman who was anxious that the pastor of the Methodist Church she attended was moving and that they would soon be getting a new pastor. A thousand what-ifs filled her mind. She was anxious, very anxious. And so she expressed her concern to her pastor and the pastor sought to reassure her that he was certain that the bishop would send a wonderful pastor, a great preacher, someone that she and the rest of the congregation would quickly come to love. To which the woman responded, that's what they told us last time. <laughs> well, we live in a world and in a time when it is easy to be, as Jesus said, worried or anxious about many things. One of my favorite stories from the Old Testament is the story of God providing manna in the wilderness. The Israelites had just escaped from their bondage in the land of Egypt. They were on their way to the promised land. But who knew that it would take them 40 years to get there? And so they found themselves wandering around in the desert surrounded by rocks and sand with no water and no food. And they were worried. They were anxious. You can almost hear them saying to themselves, what if we can't find water? What if we starve to death out here in the middle of the desert? What if we don't make it to the promised land? And worst of all, what if Moses only thought he heard God's voice? And they began to wonder if they hadn't made a colossal mistake in leaving Egypt. Sure, they had been in bondage, but at least they had had food and water. And so they complained to Moses, who took their complaint to God, and God provided them with quail and a mysterious food called manna, with the instruction that they were to gather enough for only one day, except that on the day before the Sabbath, they were permitted to gather two days' ration of manna. And they were cautioned that if they tried to store more than one day's worth of manna, it would spoil what was God trying to teach the Israelites as he allowed them to wander around in the wilderness for some 40 years before they entered into the promised land? Perhaps it was obedience, but I really think it was trust. Learning that God could be trusted to provide their daily bread. Just as we often pray in the Lord's Prayer Give us this day our daily bread. We don't pray for a week's supply of bread, a month's supply of bread, a year's supply of bread. We pray for bread sufficient for one day. That's what Jesus taught us. Because you see, the secret to being non-anxious is to discover that God can, in fact, be trusted 
to provide our daily needs. Maybe God was also trying to teach the Israelites and us that life itself is a gift. Each day as they gathered the quail and the manna enough for a single day, they were reminded that life is a gift. A thankful spirit is born of the realization that all of life is a gift. Each day is a, of life is a gift. Every morning that you wake up is a gift. Every day that your feet hit the floor as you rise from your bed is a gift. The food on your table is a gift. The clothes on your back and your, in your closet are a gift. The house in which you live is a gift. And the love of God expressed in countless ways, but especially in His Son, Jesus Christ, that too, especially, is a gift. The context of Jesus' admonition, do not be afraid, is the paralyzing fear that somehow God will not provide for the necessities of life, which in turn causes us to become selfish. And when we become selfish, we begin to hoard our possessions in order to provide for our own security rather than trusting God. But Jesus says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or your body, what you will wear. Why? First, because life is more than food and the body more than clothes. We cannot hear these words of Jesus without remembering Jesus' reply to Satan when he was being tempted to in the desert to turn stones into bread. And Jesus responded, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And what was true for Jesus is also true for us. Second, because the same God who cares for the birds of the air and the flowers of the field will certainly care for you. Jesus reminded us that birds don't sow or reap, and yet God provides food for them. And flowers don't spin or labor, but even Solomon in all his glory and splendor was never dressed as these. If God can be trusted to provide for birds and wildflowers, then God can most assuredly be trusted to provide for our necessities. And finally, who, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Jesus knew that we live in a world where it is easy to be anxious and to be filled with worry. But what does Jesus say? Jesus says, don't worry. Instead of worrying, trust God. Trust God to provide the necessities of life. And in this place, Jesus is offering us a formula for enjoying life and its blessings based on trusting that God will provide for the necessities of life. And the result of that is non-anxious living. When we trust that God will provide for the necessities of life, we become less fearful, less anxious. And so Max Licato encourages us to experience calm in a chaotic world by leaving our concerns with God with thanksgiving. I want to invite you this morning to imagine that every time you came to worship, you came dragging a huge duffel bag full of all of your worries and all of your anxieties and all of the myriad of what-ifs about things that could possibly go wrong in your life, the things that consume our every waking moment and our every sleepless night. Imagine bringing that huge duffel bag filled with all of those worries and anxieties and what-ifs and imagine leaving those worries and all those things that create anxiety of your life and leaving them right here at the altar. And as you do so, imagine saying, God, I've been dragging this duffel bag around with me everywhere I've gone. But no more. No more. Today, I leave my duffel bag full of worries, anxieties, and what-ifs here with you 
trusting that you will help me with the challenges of today and that when the sun rises tomorrow, you will be with me again to help me with the challenges that tomorrow may bring. Imagine leaving this church today without having to drag that huge duffel bag full of worries and anxieties and what-ifs with you all week long, everywhere you go. Imagine how freeing that would be. That's what it means to leave your concerns with God with thanksgiving. As we prepare to observe thanksgiving in little over a week, let us live in faith and trust that God will in fact provide for the necessities of our lives. Let our hearts be filled with gratitude for all of God's gifts, for clothing, for food, and for the gift of life itself. And let us experience life without worries, knowing that God can indeed be trusted to provide for our needs. Our memory verse for our series is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I want to invite you to recite that, those words with me, but I also want you to at the end of it, add the verse reference because someday you're going to want to look this up again and go, remind me again what that scripture verse was. And so let's recite the verse and then add the reference, 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. Our closing hymn for today is number 522 in your hymnal. Leave it there. No words could be more appropriate to complete this message for today. Um, But when you look at it, you're going to go, I don't know this hymn. Well, that's exactly the reaction I had when uh, we talked about it in staff meeting this week. And then as we began to look at it a little closer, uh, we discovered that the tune behind it was amazingly similar to when the roll is called up yonder. And so we went the next step and we just put it with when the roll is called up yonder, didn't we? Is that what we did? Well, it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much the same. So you'll uh, recognize, even though it seems unfamiliar, um, we're going to sing this together, the first three verses, and then we're going to take a, have a little musical interlude. And during that interlude, we invite any of you who have your bags of uh, food that you've brought for bringing the harvest to bring those forward and place them here at the chancel rail inside the, the rail here um, Uh, during that period of time and then we'll conclude our service with the final verse all right please stand as we sing
at the front of the church this morning, there's a huge, huge heap of duffel bags filled with your worries, your anxieties, and your what-ifs, and that you'll leave them there and trust them to God. May the God of Jesus, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and may Christ himself go with you as you leave this place and give you calm and peace in your spirit. Amen.